Today I'm doing a transmission service on this 2015 Nissan Murano with a 3.5 liter V6 and a CVT transmission. I'm going to be dropping the pan, replacing the pan screen and the uh, oil filter on the side of the transmission and the pan gaskets and uh, putting new fluid in. Now this car has approximately 61,000 and change on it so it's just past its recommended service mileage. So uh, let's get busy. Alright, first this uh, air intake box has to come off. Pretty easy, just two small bolts. Now here is the cap for the uh, transmission fluid filler tube. You can put a screwdriver down here and pop this and then this pops right off. So you just put your screwdriver in there, push that away, and bada bing. You'll be filling your transmission fluid back up through this tube with a funnel. Now as always I recommend if you've if you're changing the transmission fluid on a Nissan or Toyota or any other, I would recommend using the factory fluid. This is an N-3 fluid, but uh, not all fluids are created equally. And if you want to avoid trouble down the road, I would recommend just sticking with the Nissan N-3 fluid. Jack stands. All right, now that I've got the car up in the air on jack stands and relatively level, I'm gonna start it up, bring the engine up to running temperature, and then I'll start the, the draining and uh, pan removal of the transmission. So we'll let this sit for about 10 minutes. All right, now, next thing you want to do is take off this plastic shroud. I would recommend getting one of these tools. Uh, you can get these with a kit of these replacement cl uh, clips, which are uh, pretty cheap. You can buy them online from the usual suspects. What you do is you just put them in like this, pop the metal out, and then take the whole thing out. Just like that. One of the reasons, one of the reasons I recommend getting a, a new set of these clips is because these things break easily, especially if they're, you know, like four or five years old. You get a little brittle, and when you go to take them out, they'll break. So you need replacements. Now, along with these clips, you've got one, two, three, four 10 millimeter bolts. So before you take the last clips out of this, you want to remove those bolts.
that's that. Now this is where the external oil filter is. Now there's a pickup screen, some people call it a filter. It's metal, it's inside here. And all that does is strain out heavy particles. If anything starts to uh, shred in there, it'll keep it from causing more damage inside the transmission. Hopefully I'll find that is uh, clean. If not, uh, that would indicate that this transmission has limited uh, life left. Unfortunately, as opposed to other year transmissions, all of these 10 millimeter bolts are extremely easy to get at. They're all accessible. With the exception of this one up here, it looks like I'll need a swivel, but it's still uh, plenty of room there. With the exception of this one here, all of these screws are very accessible. This one here, I will probably need a swivel, but there's, there's plenty of room. Um, that's the 2015 Murano. Uh, other years, it's a little tighter fit in other models. Alright, now this is a 19 millimeter plug. Now one thing to uh, watch out for is that this fluid is factory trained by Nissan to crawl down your arm and into your armpit. And you can see that fluid's a little brown, it should be blue. It smells a little burnt too. Now in case you're wondering, This is the overflow nut. And when you fill this thing up, put everything back together, you'll take this out while you're running it, when it's up to running temperature. And then it'll run out this about as fast as it's running out here. And you want to put the plug back in when it's just a dribble. And your transmission is filled. These are 10 millimeters. Yeah, I don't think I need to tell you, keep track of your bolts. All right, this has the factory metal gasket. That means I can reuse it. Nice. And as you can see, there's not a lot of metal debris in there. As you can see here, the, the magnets have not collected a lot of metal debris. That's really good news. Great. Okay, now the 
some of these are different sizes, so you got to keep track. Now, here's what I call a dirty trick. This is a magnet extension. I'm going to put this into my oil pan and retrieve my bolts. One. And there is two. Well, there's some encouraging news. Now I'm going to clean this gasket surface off here. Fortunately, there's no gasket remnants. That's always a problem when you're replacing automotive components is that when you have a gasket in between a lot of times portions of the gasket stick and you got to get it all off every last speck okay so I cleaned these magnets off and I wiped all the oil out of this and used some brake clean maybe a little bit more on this gasket surface I want this to be free of oil Now I'm going to put these back here. Each one of these bumps helps keep these from migrating inside here. So in this particular one, we've got three. Centered. It's not critical, but okay. Now I'm going to clean this original gasket off. I'm going to reuse this because it's metal, and you can reuse those. That's great stuff. So I'll take a little break, clean, a clean towel, clean about half of it at a time. Both sides. Now the reason why you want to get this all the oil off this is because if you have oil sitting on the surface, it tends to uh, lead a path for oil to migrate between the gasket and the pan or the body. Shit, a little too much, but all right. So that brake clean will evaporate. leave almost zero trace of itself being there. And one nice thing about this 
gasket is it's uh, asymmetrically shaped so there's only one way it can go and if you notice there's a little bit of a bump here you can see it in the light that is goes this way and as it, it turn it over and it's a depression here and the fact that it's asymmetrical you don't have to guess which side goes down because if you try to put it this way it doesn't work it only works here and the reason why there's a slight bump on the bottom side, the side that goes against the transmission body itself, is because in here, almost imperceptibly, is a little ridge. And if you can see in the light, it follows the trail around each one of these, and it basically makes a dam. That's why you want to keep these clean, oil-free when you put them back. All right, we're going to go under and Put it back on. And there's little alignment pegs. On this gasket or on the body that the gasket fits on. Be sure to start all of your bolts before you tighten any of them. Now most of you know or have experience with working on cars or you wouldn't be here looking to do this yourself. But for those that don't, never tighten up the first screw or some of the screws, always start every screw that you have before you tighten any of them. Now I'll just finger tighten snug these so I can still move the pan but I don't want the pan to drop down. Good to start these by hand too. I have a DeWalt driver, but it's very easy, especially in aluminum, aluminum body like this, to take these stainless screws and cross thread. And if you cross thread aluminum, yeah, it makes a problem and you can fix it, but it's not easy. At least when you're making them hand tight, you can back them up before you do any damage. Now this is the front of the car. For anybody who's wondering what orientation they're looking at on the screen. And over here, that's the engine oil pan. So on the driver's side is the transmission oil pan. Which is what we're working on now. Clean this off. Have a little brake clean. 
and that'll give me an indication if I, if I got any leaks. This has already been replaced. I'll show you the, uh, the old filter I took out of there. It's pretty easy. Uh, there's a little round metal gasket with a rubber inner that goes around this outside perimeter here. And you reuse that. There's a rubber gasket that's about that big around that goes over the tip of the filter. And you pop that off and use the one that comes with the new filter. So you can reuse the big one, but you can't reuse the small one. All right. Tighten this 19 millimeter bolt up. Now, normally they, these kits come with a crush ring, but uh, I'm going to reuse this one because it didn't come with one. All right. It looks like that's it for underneath. Now I've got to fill up my transmission fluid. I'll put about four, four and a half quarts in and I'll run it until it's warm. And then I'll run it through the gears, five seconds per gear and uh, go all the way down to first gear and then five seconds go on all the way back up and that gets all the fluid into the valve body. And, uh, and then we'll drain this one. All right. See, we're at the operating temperature. Now, I put my foot on the brake and run it through the gears. Five seconds per gear. see if we're full or we need more fluid. All right, this is a 14 millimeter. All right, it's going to require a little bit. Okay, that took another half a quart. Let that run for just a little bit. Now, if I didn't say it before, you, it's very important to make sure that your car is up on jack stands, both front and rear. It has to be level for this method to work. Okay, you see we're getting a little dribbling there. That's about enough.
All right, we're good to go. Okay, as I was saying before, it's important to have the car up on jacks, both front and rear, and it needs to be level or this method of uh, measuring the fluid and getting it equalized in your transmission won't work. It, the transmission pan has to be perfectly level. So it looks like we're done. It took exactly four and a half quarts, which is about what I expected. I ordered five quarts. And uh, transmission looks good. I'm very happy about that. So everything now just goes together exactly in the reverse of how we took it apart.